Hey everyone, it's Paula here from the Excel Club. In this video, we're going to look at a complex extraction of data from a JSON column in Excel. If you follow my blog last week, I published an article showing you step by step how to phrase JSON data in Excel. In this article, we looked at how JSON data is presented and how this will split out in Excel. For example, if we have an object, this will show as a record in Excel. And if we have an array, it'll show as a list. If you missed that article, there is a link below the video and I'd recommend that you have a read of that before you continue this video. At the bottom of the article, you'll find a table of data and an activity. This video is the solution I have come up with to split out the data from the sample JSON field. The problem is that each row of the JSON data is different. Some start with an object, some start with an array. And even the objects have different data value pairs, so this means they would split out into different column headers. Now, before we get stuck in, don't forget the Excel Club blog has been powered with Steam. So if you partake in the activities, you can earn while you learn. So hop over to the blog and find out more and do engage on the comments section of the blog rather than the YouTube video. So let's get stuck in so you can see exactly what I mean. The table of data that we have here, I've copied and pasted straight from the Excel Club blog. And we can see that it has four fields. It has a transaction ID, a TID, a JSON metadata, and a timestamp. And we can see these ones down here start with a square bracket, which means it starts with an array. And it also contains another array in it. We can see these square brackets here. And these ones up here that are objects that have the data value pair, they have different data value pairs for each TID. So before you start splitting out the data, you really need to get a idea of how the JSON data is structured. And then you also need to have something that splits out each one that is different. So for example, in this case, the JSON metadata for the votes are the same. They have the same data value pairs, but they don't have the same data value pairs as the other ones, and each one is different. So in this case, our TID will be our kind of separator column. Now, if you don't have this in your data set, you need to generate one somehow. You could use maybe, you could use some sort of code or like one, two, three to identify the different JSON metadata structures. So let's put this into our Power Query. So we can go to data on our data ribbon and then go to our get data from table. And this will open up our Power Query window. Now, if you're new to Power Query, we have applied steps over here and our table name and properties here. We have our um, ribbons up the top and we also have our queries here on the left. So the first thing we'll do is we can take our, our timestamp and we can change that to date so that we can see it in date format instead of number format. Then as we noted earlier, the TID is our identification field for how our JSON metadata is actually structured. So we need to deal with each one of these one at a time. So first of all, we will come and we will just take, we'll start with follow. And in our follow, if we click our JSON metadata and we say phrase and phrase JSON, and this will give us a list. Now we can expand this list to new rows by clicking on the double arrows. Now when we expand it, the array has an array name and then the record and the array name is follow. Now we already have a TID called follow, so we don't really need that. We can remove that now and now we're just left with our records. And because we're just left with our records, we now have the ability to expand these records. Now I'm going to uncheck this use original column name as prefix because we don't want a prefix in front of these column names. We're happy with the column names and say OK. Now we've expanded these, but we had another array, which is a list. So we can expand these to new rows as well. And we can see what the follower 
who they have followed and what it is they have actually followed. But that's only for the follow TID. So what can we do now to get the others? Well, we'll change the name of this over here to follow so we know exactly what it is. And what I'm going to do is I am going to duplicate that query. And I'm going to just delete these steps here because the steps can quite easily be deleted. And instead of follow, I am going to now take our SM find match. And we can change this to SM find so we know which one it is. And in our JSON metadata, again, we can phrase this and it gives us a record which we can open and we're going to say OK. So this gives us a match type and an app. Let's again duplicate this column and we're going to remove these steps here as we had removed them before. And this time we can then take our next item, which is SM submit. We can change the name up here to submit so we know which one it is. And in our JSON metadata, if we phrase this now, we will get all of the columns that were available. And we also have a new list in here. So again, we can extract this to new rows. And if we scroll over just to double check, we have extracted all of the data from that particular JSON. Now I'm going to duplicate this again. And I'm going to, again, delete them steps right up to filtered rows. And this time we are going to select the vote and say OK. And we can change this to vote. And then we can phrase our JSON data and open up the records. And again, now we have been given each of the data types and then the data that's in it. So our data value pair. So the data opens up as a column and the value then goes in as different rows. So now we have the four types in here. Now, before I continue, I want to show you something else and how you can go wrong with this. So I'm going to remove these. Let's delete that step as well. And this time we can take our vote and our SM submit. Now, if you were to take two with the same, what will happen is when you phrase them is that only the data value types that are found in the first one will open as a new column. So you won't see these transaction IDs in, this, in the second one. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. So we will phrase, I phrased the wrong column so I can delete that. Let us phrase our JSON column. And we can see they are all records, but when we open these records, we can see that we are missing some of the data value types because it only sees the first one. Now I'm going to delete that query. Just That was just to show you that you can't just anything that is a record, you can't group all records together. What you need to do is the records individually because they will have different data value pairs and so different column headers. Now what we're going to do is we are going to transform because we want all of this into the one table. Now I did say in the activity that this requires a little bit of thinking outside the box and a little bit more power query knowledge than what we've gone through in the actual tutorial, the blog tutorial. But what we want to do now is we want to append all of these queries together. So that means sit one on top of the other. So we can append all of these queries together. So append as new. So what we basically do is take three or more tables and we're going to take all of them and add them in. And say add and then say OK. Now we have one table. It's called append one. So this is all JSON. And if we scroll over, we can see that we have the all of the column headers from all of the different types. Now we do have nulls because the sum of the data value pairs don't have that particular data type. So these will come up as nulls. And you can see there is quite a few nulls in there. 
So there you go, that's the solution that I have. We can then close and load this back to Excel. So I've se selected close and load and this will load your data back into Excel for you into a table, one table that you can see all in Excel. And you see it's getting it there and it's put it now into a table in Excel. And you can do further analysis with Power Pivot or even load it into Power BI and run further analysis from Power BI. So that's the solution that I have come up with. If you've come up with a different solution from the this activity, I'd love to see how you've done it. Please do use the blog post and add a comment to the blog post detailing and you could be rewarded with Steam. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Do give this video the thumbs up and on the blog post, also do give this blog post a little like as well. See you next time. Goodbye now.